Hello and uh, welcome to another edition of Trotsky Bus. It's the 28th of February, Friday. Um, I'm do a segment today, a little bit talk about the election that's going on, watching it, watching the stupid debates that we had a few days ago, and the crowds who are booing uh, <laughs> literacy but applauding billionaires. That's the that's the new Democratic Party for you. Um, first, I want to address the whole thing. I, I've been seeing this a lot online, even on TV, where they're making comparisons to Bernie and Trump. And these idiots have no brains at all. Okay, You cannot make that comparison. I mean, Trump was not liked by the establishment of the Republican Party, but uh, his policies were liked. That's, that's the difference. It wasn't a, uh, you know, today with Bernie, it's just the obvious. It's not personal with Bernie. It's just they don't like his policies. Trump was just the opposite. They loved this policy, they still do. I mean, tax cuts for the rich, deregulations, increased military spending. Um, that's just a regular Republican part, uh, Party policies. Any one of the 17 or however many people Trump was running against in the primaries, if they were president, they all would have done the same thing. Each and every one of them would have done exactly the same policies. Yeah, Trump's boisterous, whatever, he's obnoxious. The policies are the same. Um, oh, by the way, I want to say something real quick about deregulation because Trump loves to say job crushing regulations. Do you know regulations create seven times as many jobs as they destroy? I mean, think about it. It's, you know, one, they protect us, so they're a good thing. Two, they force companies to hire people in order to comply with the regulations. And <laughs> plus, the government is forced to hire people, too, in order to enforce the regulations. So they're a good thing. Okay, they create jobs. So uh, Democrats will never challenge them on it. Uh, regulations are a good thing. But no, Trump is, you know, Bernie, I don't know if Bernie's real. I don't trust Bernie. But if he's real, then he's not Trump. His policies are the problem, not the, his personality. Um, if he's real, that is. So, yeah, they can and will stop Bernie. I mean, they're not going to stop Bernie now. They can't stop him now, as I said in the last... Um, uh, segment. Uh, everybody is out of money. Joe Biden's going to win tomorrow in South Carolina. It's not going to make one iota of difference. Doesn't matter if he wins by 50 points. Makes no difference. Three days later, everyone will forget about South Carolina. And Joe has no money. And Buttigieg has no money. And Warren has no money. And Klobuchar has no money. The only people with money is Bernie and the Biden, and Bloomberg, and um, Steyer. The Jews have. <laughs> I can say it, I'm Jewish. <laughs> Only the Jews have money. So they're the ones going to continue, and no one's going to vote for a billionaire. No one, especially the Democratic Party. So Bernie's going to be the nominee. Then are they going to try to stop him in the convention? No, because that will destroy the Democratic Party. I wish, I pray that would happen. If I believed, I would pray that would happen. It's not going to happen. Okay, they're not going to destroy the Democratic Party. The place to stop Bernie is at the election, have Trump beat him. That's the perfect scenario for the establishment. Why? Because now you're not going to have another um, progressive for 20 years, if that. They're going to just say, oh, look, we tried it, we tried and we lost. You need unity, and unity means a, 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 a corrupt corporatist. So that's the place to beat Bernie, and it can be done. I mean, I, I don't see how everybody comes back. You see all the vitriol against Bernie and even on the view with Whoopi Goldberg and you know how does she come back what's she going to say in the fall that now all of a sudden she likes Bernie all these people who hate Bernie now are they all of a sudden going to say that they like him they can't do that they'll come up with crap and say well maybe a third maybe I'll write in Hillary Clinton yeah yeah that's a that's the, some they'll say something like that um you're saying Bernie's McGovern Nah, no. Nah. Why isn't Bernie McGovern? McGovern ran in 1972. That was 40 years after FDR won. We had 40 years, of, you know, of the New Deal, we had the Great Society programs with LBJ. Um, nah, nah. It's uh, even the Republicans, Nixon and Eisenhower, were they'd be considered liberal Democrats if they were on today. So the country then was not in need. Forty years later, Bernie, Bernie's running actually forty years after Reagan won. So we've had forty years of 
supply side economics by the Republicans, neoliberal policies by the Democrats. They've taken the once proud American work working class and turned them into the working poor. Um, look at it this way: in '72, America was fighting the communist. In 2020, we're fighting the capitalist. That's just a fact. And anyone who doesn't know that, all the people on TV who have no idea, they're just so out of touch with the average American. That's why they don't know what the average American's life is like. They don't realize that capitalism is the enemy today. They, to them, it's not. I mean, even Elizabeth Warren says, I'm a capitalist through and through. She has no idea. She has no idea what's going on. Um, again, do I trust Bernie? I'm, I'm really pissed at Bernie for not defending the so-called Bernie bros, not because, you know, sure, people are going to say obnoxious thing, but it's still America. We do have freedom of speech here. Bernie's never defended it, you know. He's, um, and actually the other day I was watching Jimmy Dore because uh, Bernie was, he was talking about how Putin now wants Bernie, and Jimmy Dore was criticizing uh, Bernie for, you know, not giving a good enough response. The, Jimmy Dore works, we used to work for RT. Jimmy Dore works for Putin. He always defends Putin. He defends Assad, who killed half a million people. Jimmy Dore doesn't. It's just another tool of the oligarch. It's just a different oligarch. Um, so, don't take that. But Bernie hasn't defended freedom of speech. I mean, no matter how bad the Bernie Bros are, which they're not Bernie Bros. Bernie supporters are, you know, usually <laughs> minorities, usually women. That's who support Bernies, but. You know, they've turned into Bernie bros. Um, but he hasn't defended freedom of speech. You know, that's what he needs to say. He's not going to say it. There's not going to be another debate till the, I think, the 15th, the Ides of March. And by then, it's going to be pretty well over. <coughs> That'll probably be, be over uh, Tuesday night after Super Tuesday. The following week, there's another huge, you know, like I said, they have no money. Okay, Bernie's going to win Cal. Bernie might sweep California. He's going to get 400 delegates here. You know, he's going to have such an insurmountable lead by even March 15th that this thing's going to be over. But like I said, the place to stop him will be at the convention. Um, one more thing about the debate, and they asked him what's their motto. And I was thinking, I wish I was up there. I'll tell you my motto. It's uh, never believe your own bullshit. You know? <laughs> but unfortunately, a politician can't say it because... <laughs> you know, <laughs> That would be so funny if somebody had said something like that. Um, Bernie had actually a good one. It was the Nelson Mandela one where nothing's possible until it's done or something like that. I don't know. Don't want to misquote it. Or like, I don't give a shit. Um, but uh, th these things are funny. They're entertaining. Uh, this, this weekend is the Combine weekend. And I remember last year at this time how I was into the Combine. And today I don't give a shit. One, my team doesn't, isn't Lions, I have no future. They just get worse. I don't know why they didn't fire their coach and general manager. But uh, it's not that. It's that this is more interesting. Politics is our new contact sport. You know, it's just it's so funny. You see them on the debate. It's <laughs> these people. Four of them were in their seventies. Uh, another two in their sixties, and they're arguing like little children. I mean, and that stupid Mayor Pete, where he's talking over, doesn't let Bernie talk like he's a kid. And I said, Pete, you can talk all you want, just say something. I mean, the thing about, you know, I live here in Southern California, I work as a salesman, I've been here 31 years. I always try to learn Spanish, you know, it's because it's necessary, it's, it's a good thing to have, but I'm not good with languages, I'm a math person. And it, it's always bothered me that I could never learn Spanish until I heard Mayor Pete speak Spanish, not in this debate, the previous one where he, he tried to show how great he is, he speaks Spanish. And I thought, oh, thank God I don't have to listen to his empty platitudes in a different language. <laughs> that was my thinking, but uh, the only time I've ever been happy that I didn't learn Spanish. Oh, wow. Um, he's such a weasel. Oh, my God. He'll probably get a job on MSNBC after this. He's not going to go into back into politics. His, you know, he's just so much on the wrong side of history. Um, and the rest of them, who cares? I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't. I, uh, uh, we have the Ebola crisis. We have the Wall Street. Wall Street is going down. Not the Ebola, I'm sorry. The uh, coronavirus, which is really... A, I agreed with Trump. It's just like a 
strong flu. It's not that a big deal. I mean, they say 2,600 people have died. Remember, 3,300 people die every day from car accidents in the world. 3,300. We haven't even reached that with the coronavirus. Um, it's, it is overblown. Uh, people are scared of it. I think China is recovering. They've already, I guess, they're starting to reopen the ports. Their number of cases going down. Um, Trump, it's just Trump is using it for politics, but so are the Democrats, you know. And they'll just show how incompetent Trump is, which, duh. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's not a big thing. Like I said, 3,300 people die every day of car accidents. 90 just in the United States, so. And uh, what else do I want to talk about? Um, that's about oh the stock market. The reason the stock market has gone down so much, I don't think it's, I don't think it's the coronavirus. That doesn't make sense. I was thinking they blame Bernie because Bernie did win Nevada big on Saturday and all, and the stock market began the cat the slow down or the stock market went down on Monday. It's gone down every day. I don't know if it's gone down today. I think it has. The last time I checked, uh, it's still where it was like in December, November. So it's, it's just a correction, not a, I'm a Wall Street expert, but yeah, it's just a correction. It's not a big deal. Rich people are still going to get richer. And hopefully if Bernie wins, he'll raise their taxes. I doubt it because, you know, that's another tool of Democrats. If they can't beat Bernie, at least if they can stop from gaining the Senate, and don't think they won't do that. If they don't have the Senate, then nothing will happen. And if Bernie sticks to no keeping the filibuster, then nothing will get done. So, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, uh, uh, still have the fires in Australia and the rest of the world. And people don't see it. They don't see it. The world's coming to an end. Anyhow, that's about it. Tell me what you think. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Maybe I talked a little bit too much today. But uh, enjoy your weekend. And Trotsky's out.